Sound check. Check one. Check two. Hello, Michelle. Hello. Oh, good. I am so glad to be here. I haven't seen you in forever. Forever. I know. I know. It's it's crazy. Um, and I think everyone feels this. COVID didn't just mess with our lives, you know, from a from a health perspective. It it kind of messed with time, because everything kind of came to a stop. And I've seen you yeah. since COVID started. We last time we were together it was uh, twenty twenty one. So we've certainly seen each other in the midst of COVID, but it just yeah, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. But anyway, it has been. It's been a couple of years. Have you? How have you been? I mean, overall, I've been really good. Yeah. We um, like we were talking in the pre-show. I did have some grief and some loss yeah. in my family. And uh, 2021 or 2022 was, a, was kind of a cocoon year, right? Yeah. So even as an artist, I pulled back from performing. Um, as a business owner, I kind of just did the same plug and play and then showed up as meaningfully as I could within grief and all of that. And, um, but it, I'm, I'm good. Like it was good. I feel like I did a great job taking care of myself. Good and taking care of my team and my singing my singers and all of that so um so i feel good i'm a little tired it's 7 p.m where i am and i had a very restful weekend so thank you for getting me ready for monday <laughs> yeah some uh, uh, my 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 um my 10 o'clock student this morning because it's it is only sort of the middle of the day here uh, on a monday and uh, she had had, she's a professional singer and she'd had a, a pretty full weekend. So you can imagine what a 10 a.m. Monday morning singing lesson looks like for a pro singer. Um, she usually, she, she was a little bit flagged today. So I, I, yes, it, it, a big weekend can leave one feeling a little bit. Ugh. So ha hang with me for the next, <laughs> the next 40 minutes. I, I will. I we, you and I, we always have a great chat and, and today... Uh, we, we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about attitude, but just so for those people who are new to the show, we're certainly new enough in the last couple of years where they haven't met you before. Um, let's just very briefly introduce you. You, you, you have your own business, Faith, Faith Culture Kiss, which I, you can speak to in a second. Yeah. Yeah. So you, well, you I, just, I just realized like we, we totally have a, like a new web. We have a new place that we live on the internet. Oh, do you? And, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, that happened. I never told Dr. Dan. Oh, no, you <laughs> didn't because you also have this thing called, um, the, the speak easy collaborative, which is kind of more from the business point of view. Okay. Well, update me, update everyone. Sure. So if we haven't, if I haven't met you before, hello, everyone. And if I have met you before on Dr. Dan. So as you know, I do, I am the founder of the Speakeasy Cooperative. And that is a place where we teach business owners how to be business owners. We teach creative brain people, artists such as yourself, voice teachers, all sorts of creatives, how to understand business and think like business owners so that they can tear down whatever toxic money systems are in their life. They can make a living. They can make great decisions. And that's what we get to do. So Faith Culture Kiss is the voice studio side of my business. And then the Speakeasy Cooperative is my support for artists and uh, business owners side of my business. And the last time I checked, faithculturekiss.com still works. You still get to you via that web domain, you yes? Can. Yep. You can, or you can go to the speakeasycooperative.com. Whatever, yeah. we're easy. We're and, on the internet. Don't and just so, us. just so people know, um, we're not going to be talking singing teacher business today, or it might come yeah. up, but we're going to really be talking about attitude and mm -hmm. and the way we orientate um, our heart and mind towards this singing thing. And I, I find, as I and I, I know you do, Michelle, that. More often than not, the biggest um, barrier to to the development of someone's voice is actually not their larynx. It's it's actually right. their 
their mental approach, dare I, let's, let's call it attitude. And that's not to say people have a bad attitude, but they, their, 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 their mental orientation towards mm -hmm. their singing can, can really prove to be a, a, a significant hurdle that, that constantly trips people up. And this is for both professional and avocational singers, yeah? Anyone with a voice. Yeah. Executives, people giving TED Talks, podcasters, singers, um, spoken word artists, anyone who is using their physical instrument to communicate mission, vision, message is going to encounter times when they are asking themselves questions about their own identity, questions about their own instrument, and then how that impact is being felt. And um, I know you're calling it attitude. We're calling it attitude today. I also call it mindset. And I like to think of it as like the glasses that we're wearing, right? You Have you heard that expression, you know, rose colored glasses? It means that you're seeing everything in a great way, maybe for good, maybe for ill. But I find that artists will put on these really gray glasses and those gray glasses make it very foggy. They're not sure what to do. They don't trust themselves. Yeah. They're not, they see everything with kind of a haze over it. And that stops them from making just strong, impactful decisions for themselves and trusting themselves. Yeah. And um, that's kind of the attitude that I think is the number one hold backer of artists and singers is that lack of self trust that their instrument will communicate what they are so desperately wanting to communicate. And that's what we need to work on in the studio. Yeah. Not yeah. just the technical. Yes, absolutely. And it, isn't it interesting, I find that so often when working with, with students that it, I, I so desperately want to be able to and often try to communicate to them that what I'm hearing and what they're hearing, there's a disconnect, there's a dissonance between the two because what I'm hearing, I'm enjoying. But what they're hearing is is being filtered through that mindset. I, I just went and grabbed yeah. this text by um, Professor Carol Dweck. Um, which I yeah. highly recommend, um, mindset. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the um, growth mindset as opposed to fixed mindset. And I think that's a, a great additional way of talking about attitude. Um, and, and sometimes it's, it's really hard, isn't it, to, to remove that. You're referring to them as, as gray glasses. I like that, rose-colored glasses, to remove that filter that where that everything's being processed through um what have you found when when working with people who quite evidently have have that and we all do have these these filters in place right that yeah. that cause us to hear ourselves in a particular way or to think of ourselves in a particular way what have you found and we can't cover them all because so so many of these are nuanced and very personalized but what have you found are some re really key attributes for people to consider when wanting to um, adjust their mindset and their attitude towards their own voice? Yeah, I think learning to be self-aware in a non-judgmental space. So learning to observe rather than to critique. And singers often jump to self-editing, like vocal editing, I call it, when we're practicing something, they're listening for what they're doing, they're kind of really intent, and they're editing as they go. They're trying to figure out what they're doing wrong, how they can fix it. And that can be helpful, but only after we've made observation rather than judgment. 
So one of the things that I ask, and this is especially with original artists, um, because I work primarily with original artists, touring, that kind of thing, recording artists. Um, it's asking, it's asking yourself to be observational without being judgmental towards yourself. Yeah. And then you can say, is this what I want to bring to the vocal table? And if not, what are the things I'm willing to do to change it technically? And if I can't change it technically, what am I willing to do with the overall artistry in order to still communicate what I want to communicate? I think artists tend to get extremely um, enmeshed with their own artistry. Mm. Yeah. And that it can be really helpful to remember that your art is the thing that you create out of you, but it is not you. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't have power over another person's perception of our art. Yeah. We only have power over how we engage with our own art. Mm. So some of the attributes I find with the most successful artists are people who are willing to be serious about their art, but not be take themselves so seriously. Be okay making mistakes, trying new things, risk taking, trying new sounds, being silly, taking a song and singing it in a way that they would never in a million years, million years singing it in front of a group of people, but just being playful. Another attitude that I see in really successful people is the ability to get input and change their art based on collaboration. So the artists who double and triple down on what they feel is the right thing, this has to be like this, this, you know, melody line has to be like this and da da da, and they get really um, passionate about it being just so are the people who fall into perfectionism traps and the people who fall into, like you were saying earlier, fixed mindset where we can't change something. And it also makes it really hard to collaborate with you, yeah. which then kind of starts this ball rolling of self. <laughs> it's like self-fulfilling prophecy. No one wants to work with me, but it has to be just the way that I want it, which makes no one want to, to work, work with, with you, with yeah. me, right? So those are some attributes that I see in really successful artists. The ability to observe without judgment, the ability to collaborate, the ability to take risks, and to not take everything so personally, to not yeah. take failure personally. Yeah. It's, it's a challenge, isn't it? Because when we're working towards a growth mindset, having, you know, been in a fixed mindset, one, one has to really shelve one's ego, you know, mm -hmm. and, and be willing to make observably silly mistakes because it's actually only through the making of those mistakes that the learning process can really take place. And the difficulty is, I think, in our modern society is that when you're doing that, you're painfully aware that other people don't know that you're trying to work towards a growth mindset. And so you really have to work, you've, you've, you've really got to own that process, haven't you, for yourself and, and be very content within. And, and, and that's, that can be quite difficult for some people to be, to be strong enough within themselves to, to, and that's not a, that's not a judgment. That's just a, a recognition that this is, this is not easy. It's one, it's one thing for us to wax lyrical about this attitudinal shift, but it's, it's actually the, I guess if it were easy, everyone would be doing it, right? Well, yeah. And I, I think what's so interesting is that this is, this really ultimately comes down to boundaries. Yeah. And our acceptance of what we can and cannot control. It is poor boundaries to try to make another person feel any sort of way about you. You can't do that. So if you're constantly 
working on your artistry with the lens of what is another person going to think about me or my art, then you're already 10 steps behind because you don't have any control over that anyway. And it's a low key manipulation tactic to try to get people to feel a certain way about you. And I think the big attitude shift of like, I am in charge of me. I can only control myself and my reactions rather than how other people come at me or what they say about me or what the haters say and all of that. Um, that is essential. And I do think that that's that deep inner fortitude because, you know, Angela Duckworth was studying with Carol Dweck and she wrote grit. Yep. And there's a little, there's some contrary studies too, but, but ultimately it is this idea of, are you in a place that thinks that nothing is going to change? Do you have what's called eternity bias, eternity thinking? I'm going to do this thing and it's going to be like this forever and ever. Amen. Or are you in a place that you expect growth? You expect mm. change. Mm. You understand you're not going to be the same singer tomorrow as you are today. You're not going to believe the same thing about your voice in two weeks that you believe today. And the music you create in a year is not going to be the same as the music you create in five minutes. It's really leaning into that neural plasticity. Um, yes. You know, to, to acknowledge that I, I don't have to, this is not set in concrete, right? That, that, that mm -hmm. my, to actually be healthy as a human being is, is to be growing, is to be changing, is to be developing. Yeah. Coming. Like that, that's the definition of being a person. Yeah. <laughs> being a healthy person. Coming back a to healthy that, person. Coming, coming back to that word you used, and it's a word that we hear all the time, perfectionism. And we, mm. I think... I think this has been going around for a number of years now where we kind of, the, the, where, when the term perfectionism is used, it's, it's often used as a really negative value, yeah, that, we're, that, it's, mm -hmm. that it has a, a, a real negative connotation and, and I'm not looking to, to uh, undo that. But equally, when we're dedicated to our craft, mm -hmm. we are wanting to refine our, our craft. We are wanting to improve, develop, um, and and we to a certain extent we want to polish it, don't we? We want to, but we don't want to fall into the perfectionism trap. With I think is the exact terminology you used. How do we how do we play that line? How do we get that balance right? Because it's 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 all too easy. I know I find it all too easy. Before I know it, I've fallen into the perfectionism mm. trap. I thought I was, I started out searching for refinement and polish and improvement, but now I'm getting fixated and, and getting sort of locked up. How do we, how do we manage that, that, what can be quite a fine, fine line? Yeah. Well, I would say if you're the type of person that, we'll just kind of put whatever out there and not be very worried about it, then a mindset shift you might want, might want to have is a pursuit of a journey of excellence. So pursuing excellence rather than pursuing perfection. And if you're like you and I, who will just pick it apart to death 25, seven times, <laughs> because we want it to be so excellent, right? And there's always something that could be different. I would encourage people like us to say done is better than perfect because perfectionism <clears throat> is actually a trap to get you to not be prolific. And as artists, we have to be prolific because the creative process requires, as you said, doing things over and over again. This is just the nature of creativity is you put a nickel in in order to get a song out. And so um, done is better than perfect has been a real mantra in my yeah. studio and even in my own life. Yeah. Knowing that, and then that goes back to what I can and cannot control, right? 
because if I'm responsible to put out the most excellent thing I can and be like, you know what? It is excellent enough. It is done and it is out there. I don't have any control of what's going to catch fire. And I think we see this kind of in social media kind of, you know, since we both have businesses where we serve people online, you don't know what's going to go to viral. <laughs> you don't know what's going to spark. You don't know what song is going to like blow you up. You don't know. You don't know any of that. No. All your responsibility is to just keep pursuing excellence and yeah. then getting it out there. Yeah. Don't self-sabotage yeah. by keep hoarding it until it's perfect because yeah. Even if you, even by the time you think it's perfect, you're going to put it out there and somebody's not going to like it. I, I always remember when I, when I hear people talking about this and I, I love what you're saying here because I, I often say that excellence is doing the best you have with what you've got in a given moment. And, yeah. and I, I always, I, I, I love the, and I'm not sure, I'm going to put this out here, out, out, out as fact, but it might be purely urban myth, but this, the story is still good that when Tolkien came to writing The Lord of the Rings, which I personally love and have read many times, watched the movies, extended version, Blu-rays, you know, I've got the whole deal. Um, but when Tolkien came to, to needing to publish it, needing to send it into his publisher to be printed, he, 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 wouldn't, he wouldn't release it. And so a group of his friends actually had to intervene. They had to kidnap him and take him away from his house to collate the manuscript to finally send it off to the editor for final publishing. And, and, and he, he, if, if Tolkien had been left to his own device, we, we still wouldn't have it. <laughs> Be yeah, and yet it's known as a literary masterpiece mm -hmm. because it got done. And, and I think sometimes we are withholding masterpieces by virtue of, of seeing it through that filter of, of perfectionism and, and that robs, that's not only robbing everyone else of joy, it's robbing us of joy, and I wanted to talk. I wonder what what do you think? Some of, so we know perfectionism is going to rob us of joy. What what do you think are some things that we can be doing as singers that are going to cultivate joy in our voice, and and that attitude of of enjoyment and and a sense of fulfillment. Sing what you love to sing, at least once a day, even if it's not what you're working on. Just sing your heart music. Just sing. Because we all know there are going to be times when we have a gig that we love that gig. And then there are going to be times where we do not love the music we are singing up the Um, Sing what you love. Sing your heart music. Sing it poorly. Sing it. Just sing. Sing in your shower. Sing if you have children. Sing with your kids. Sing what you love to sing at least once a day for joy. The second thing I would say is write more music, even if you're not a songwriter. So not with the goal of writing music to record, even if you're not a songwriter, yeah. but this, the creative act of just improvising, mm -hmm. get a book and just like, here, I have... <laughs> <laughs> I have a music theory book right here. You Joy. Know, open the book and be like, <laughs> structural harmonies are those that appear at strategic points of melody that provide a sense of tonality. <laughs> right? I, I don't care. Pick up a book and like sing. See, look, I brought joy to Dr. Dan. You, you bring <laughs> you bring joy to Dr. Dan on a on a regular basis, Michelle, but that that was special. Thank you. But I'm just, but that's serious. Like sing when you're doing chores. My husband likes to say, Oh, here comes Michelle the musical. Because I'll just like start making up songs while I'm doing I'm like, I have a purple pen. You know? Sing about silly things. Uh-huh. Be silly. Be, Be playful. Silly. Because this is the most 
wonderful instrument of all. You can't, you can't make this thing sound like opera. I mean, you can make this thing sound like opera or musical theater or silly songs or pop rock or blues or gospel or country or world music. It's like there's so much you can do with this instrument. You can't necessarily do that with a piano or a violin or a guitar, you gotta change the guitar, right? Like an electric guitar sounds different than an acoustic guitar. A honky tonk piano sounds different than an organ, right? But this thing, you can be so playful and make so many sounds. And so to bring joy, be playful with your voice. That also increases your wrist muscle. Um, I, I talk a lot about how do we actually increase our wrist muscles? Cause risk is one of those things when we're afraid to do something, that means that we have low risk tolerance, right? So we can yeah. grow our risk tolerance by doing very simple, small things. One thing, um, let's say you never go out of the house with makeup, without makeup, right? If you're a young person who wears makeup out there. One day, just go out of the house without it. Let's say you're a very stylish person. You're worried about wearing the same outfit, you know, over and over again. Wear the same outfit three days in a row. You know, do vo take vocal risks when you're at the grocery store. Instead of saying thank you to the cash register person, sing it. <laughs> That's thank you. That, that, that right. Would, that would be a risk. Yeah. Yeah. So you can take all these little risks because there's actually science that tells us that when we're taking risks, it builds our serotonin, it builds our dopamine, and then the payoff of those risks can bring joy and happiness. And so to release some of those little chemicals, and it also helps our body learn that um, with our amygdala response, like our lizard brain kind of having that burst of uh, cortisol, cortisol when yeah. you're getting that fight or flight, yeah. you can actually, it's the same chemical. Excitement is the same chemical as fear. So you can kind of teach yourself to feel that feeling, to have that burst of hormones in the brain and regulate within it when you're yeah. taking these small risks. And that's a great way to bring joy because when you have no fear, you have joy. My, my, uh, I do a, I don't do it daily, but I do a daily meditation. Uh, I do it two or three times a week. And this morning's meditation was around, um, anxiety. And she was actually talking about because it's a guided meditation and she was talking about, um, you know, m moving out of that um, security space, but it's essentially what you've just said. But, uh, but in thinking about that and then thinking about what you're saying, I, I am cognizant that there are people watching today's show who may not be um, in um, the the best mental place, like their their mental health is not in a place where risk taking is, you know, easily done. What uh, and acknowledging that neither of us are psychotherapists or psychologists, um, we're not. not we're we're going to stay within our lane here. But what are how can we encourage? people who are going, oh, that's all well and good for, you know, the general populace. Um, what can, how can we encourage people who are struggling with anxiety um, mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a key um, hurdle around singing with joy or um, their attitude towards their own voice? Yeah. Well, therapy. Yeah. Um, especially if you're going to, well, you know what, it, whether you're professional or avocational, you know, trauma is a real thing, whether it's little T trauma or big T trauma, and it causes a somatic response in our body, right? Somatic in our body. And I think, you know, if you are out there and you yeah. are a person that's like, well, thanks for all the platitudes, Michelle. Um, I, I'm not saying these things because I think that they're going to work for everyone. I'm saying these things to show you that there are options and there might be better people. In fact, there are better people than your voice teacher to help you 
with yeah. those anxieties. Yeah. Your voice teacher should not, you know what? Talk about red flags. Your voice teacher should not be trying to be your therapist. They Absolutely. should not be trying to be your counselor. Yeah. They should, you know, I think a good voice coach will have, like I'm trained in several coaching modalities. Like they will know how to ask questions to get you to uncover kind of some of the narratives you're telling yourself, some of those, um, some of the patterns that you're falling into. Yeah. But your voice teacher is not your therapist. And if you're struggling with anxiety, that is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. And you need to get the people around you who are equipped and trained to help with that and then have your voice coach be part of that conversation as part of your team. Yeah. You know, and um, I would say find find a person that can help you help yourself. Yeah. Because when we're depressed and, and often with anxiety and then also with several different neurodivergent uh, ways of being, it's hard for us to help ourselves. Yeah. And so finding someone that we can body double with, finding someone who we trust to help us find the resources that we need to find is really important to do yeah. so if you're one of those people who really is struggling with anxiety there is no shame around that no none because that's real yeah. and then you get support and then you try these things that we're talking about with uh, help from your support system yeah um artists especially we feel very 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 deeply yeah we feel very deeply and it's important that we acknowledge that, you know, we are going to have fear. And when I say something like no fear, we all know that's not true. This is about being brave. It's about doing things anyway, even when we are afraid in yeah. order to build our tolerance and our resistance and our fortitude and even our grit. Yeah. But sometimes you just need to hide. And sometimes you need to take care of yourself. So this is where we go back to, well, how do, how do I be professional if it's not perfect? How do I be professional if I'm not like always trying to make it better? Well, I would offer that it's professional for you to understand your own limits and your own needs and then act accordingly. Um, successful people are people who take their mental health seriously. They are people who care enough about themselves to listen to their deep voice, their inner voice. And it's okay if you take a week off from being playful. Yeah. It's okay if you take a week off from art, you know? So, I know it sounds like we're talking out of both sides of our mouth right now, but like you said, there's so many different people watching and there's so many different um, ways to approach it. Uh, so I'm glad that you brought that up and we could kind of speak to that. Yeah. Yeah. Area as well. There's, there's another, <laughs> there's another group I think that, um, that we can, that we can um, uh, be aware of. And that is um, cultural diversity, um social diversity um because this you know the attitude towards singing uh, uh, some of our attitudes we derive culturally yeah and and, and yes. so and so therefore our orientation towards this singing thing i mean in western culture you know i, I and i've spoken we, we we won't go down the rabbit hole that is you know my soapbox which is tv talent shows but the the added the 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 it, it creates this attitude where in western culture where we start to see that we have singers and non-singers and so this cultural mm -hmm. norm is is speaking to us constantly as westerners by virtue of tv talent shows in part like we can't can't lay the entire blame at, at their feet, but in part, 
it's driven that you know well only the only the singers get to be on that show and and of course that can that can speak you know very in a very um subterranean kind of way in our psyche what a when i'm talking about this are there what other cultural norms do we do you think that we need to be aware of when it comes to singing oh my i'm like well how deep how deep how long do we have Dr. we've got Dan? five minutes like, like, <laughs> i know well thanks here answer like <laughs> you're funny okay he did that to me on purpose everyone saw that he gave me an PhD come on, level question. Come on, you're up for it, Michelle. Okay. I know, I am. So cultural norms that affect the way that we view ourselves. Well, I do, yes. So we have the ha- this people who are singers, people who are not singers. And and it's constantly made fun of, right? Yep. Like people who can sing, people yep. who can't sing, yep. like in television, media. Um, I also think that we have um, classist belief and behaviors around certain sounds, I think we have racist belief and behavior around sounds, what kind of music is playing where and how we judge those sounds. Yeah. If they don't sound like sounds that we make. Um, I think that adds to it. I also think because obviously I'm from a Western lens in terms of culture and I am a white woman. So, uh, you know, I have to understand my own privilege and my own place in the vocal conversation when we're having this conversation. I think uh, going back, but this goes back to self-awareness, right? Where are my inherent biases? We ask ourselves as singers, where are my inherent biases getting in the way of me making my voice do the thing that I would like it to do or learn the motor function that it needs to learn or unpack the narratives I'm telling myself. So uh, this goes back to where am I supposed to be singing? Where, where am I allowed to sing? Where is good? Where is good? So you, I know you've had Dr. Shannon Coates on your show. So this idea of like good and bad singing, just throw that out the window, right? Absolutely. Are you overly, um, are you overly ingesting narratives around singing that puts morality yeah. into the sounds? Yeah. Um, are you a person who maybe had a traditional singing experience where you were told that there was one technical approach Mm. that was appropriate, Mm -hmm. which is usually Western classical, which means a lot of things. Like how do you define Western classical? Cause there's, you know, there's so many years of information in the, in that canon of sound as well. But um, I think for popular singers and for people who are doing gig singing, we also have to fight the cultural narrative of singers aren't musicians right um and which makes that's the thing that makes me want to right there in the crack of thyroid (laughs) um so you know but unpacking for yourself like who who what do i think a singer is yeah and this is where we get back into identity versus what you're able to do. Like what you're able to do is independent of who you are. You are not a human doing, you are a human being. being. Indeed you are. So ask yourself, what did I learn about singing? What did I learn about where I was allowed to sing? What I was allowed to sing, how loud or how quietly I was allowed to sing. And see if any of those things are kind of trying to sneak their way into your practice, into your voice lesson, into your self-study. Um, like you said, this is not the most important organ in your body when it comes to singing. This is. Always. Yeah. And <clears throat> if you're not willing to deal with this, no amount of this will get you what you need or desire. Yeah. I, I, I've i looked down at the time and as, as is per normal, um, we're, we're, we're running out of it. Um, yeah. Um, 
I but I want to I want to finish off by just putting a, a neat bow of 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 encouraging safety. We've talked about a lot of things today. Um, we've talked to mental health. We've talked <laughs> very briefly to cultural and societal expectations. Um, but a, a, a lot of these, uh, the, dare I say, the risk taking mm -hmm. that we're encouraging because risk taking is about you know is a part of that process of as we've said of moving from fixed to to growth mindset um but but we i want to encourage everyone to do this safely it's it's so important that we do it in a way where we're doing it in an environment that is encouraging that we're being um given uh healthy feedback external to ourselves so it's important that we give ourselves healthy feedback, but it's equally important that we go about garnering healthy feedback from others. How? What, what are some things that people can do to, to go about what we're talking about today safely? Do you mean emotionally safely? Or I, I think safely? Em, um, emotionally um, certainly, um, we want people to, to observe, uh, healthy voicing and <laughs> the entire voice essentials <laughs> channel is about healthy voicing, Yeah. but I'm talking more about that s s psychosomatic process that, um, where, you know, for example, finding yourself with a singing teacher that is going to you know, really be in your corner and be supportive, but not not dishonest in that supportive behavior. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. What are you, what are your thoughts? Well, I think, I think in terms of finding yourself in a safe situation, yeah, this is where as artists, we have to under talk about the cultural understanding of singing, right? Um, if you are in a environment where the teacher knows everything about you and your voice and you don't know anything about you and your voice and the teacher is there in order to tell you everything about you and your voice that is a red flag you always know your body and your voice more than any other person and your teacher is there to guide you unto yourself they are not there to guide you into their cookie cutter version of what you should be um, if you express an opinion that is contrary to what your coach or your teacher um, says and they get defensive and are unable to regulate their own emotional response to that, that is a red flag. However, if you say, well, I don't agree with that. Why is that? And your teacher says, great, let's talk about it. Tell me more. Let's let's pull it apart. Let's explore it. Um you know what is safe and this goes back to what we were saying at the very beginning trust yourself this singing stuff people will try to convince you that you cannot trust yourself yeah. and you can <laughs> you can if something doesn't feel right you can explore it you have choices you can explore it and see well maybe it's me maybe i need to unpack something or you can say, this isn't the right thing for me right now. Remember that your boundaries aren't in how other people treat you. Your yeah. boundaries are in how you are going to behave. And if you want to be in a safe environment, you must determine what, what is safety for you. You must define, I feel safe when X, Y, Z. Yeah. Or as yes. they say in Australia, X, Y, Z, right? <laughs> You determine what is safe for you. And those are the questions that you sh you can ask when you go. If you've never taken voice lessons before, yeah. maybe you've taken for a very long time. Maybe you're going to university. Yeah. You can ask these questions. How does it work here? Um, but don't ever be afraid to challenge anyone who is not making you feel like you can't trust your own voice. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's a big ask. I know that that also takes a level of fortitude. Yeah. Um, but if you 
if you're in an environment where you you have less say over your own instrument than your teacher, it's a it, stage left exit stage left even, right? It's okay, it's okay to end that relationship. Yeah. yeah, safety safety in the learning environment, in the risk taking environment, is is so important. Mm -hmm. So thank you for for adding that that point at the end it was it was it was a it was more than a point that that almost trivialized which is that was not intended um <laughs> i'm easy it was a big fat point okay we we are out of time um do you know what i was just i just had a brief the do you know that might have been the deepest conversation we've ever had on the show together like that was we we went we went deep today you think that's deep? No, 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 no. I'm talking about on the show. We've, oh, good. You, well, you, we can go you know, deeper. You, you and I, I have I been go. been much deeper together, but no, I'm talking on the show. <laughs> well, we, I'm so glad that you would. Um, I'm so glad to anyone listening out there, and especially on the replay. Like, let us know. Yeah. Let us know what you think about this. You know, we're. It does us no good to shy away from difficult topics. It does us no good. Yeah. And it's. It doesn't help us be artists in 2023 because being an artist in 2023 is hard because you are dealing with a lot of noise about. And, and perhaps the first perhaps the first step that people can take is to start a conversation with a trusted individual yeah. to start talking about this very topic, about their attitude towards their own voice. And maybe that can be a really pro proactive step to take after today's show, which we do have to close, I'm afraid. I know, it's it's time. Um, if you've enjoyed today's show, everyone, put, give, give, give Michelle a thumbs up. I mean, you know, why not? Or two. You, I don't think you can do two thumbs up. I think you can only do one. But can you do we'll, a heart but we'll, ta we'll, we'll take it. Yeah, I think, well, actually, I don't know that you can. But anyway, I think it's just a like. Put put a, a you can put a heart in the in the comment section. So make sure you do that. Michelle, thanks for coming on to the show. I'm sorry it was two years since we last had you on, but it's been good to get you back on and get chatting. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the next time we hang out. Me too. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. For thanks for coming on. There you go, another great show and a bit of a bit of a deeper topic today. Something that I think is really important for us to talk about. But um, you know, and, and I hope that you um, uh, were able to to. I hope we were able to deal with it with a level of sensitivity um, uh, that you're able to really engage with, because uh, that was certainly our intent. Um, and uh, yeah, if you did enjoy today's show, make sure you leave it a, leave a thumbs up. Next week, we are getting together for a Q&A. This is where you chime in, you ask your questions. I give you, you know, to the best of my ability, the answers. And uh, and they're always, we, we cover a lot of ground in the Q&A uh, shows. So make sure you chime in next week. In two weeks time, we've got Dr. Matthew Edwards coming on, like prolific writer and researcher around contemporary vocals. We're going to be talking about a whole range of things. That's going to be a great show. So make sure you hit the uh, the subscribe button and the white bell icon just so you don't miss a single moment. Um, and because uh, we, I don't want you to miss out on these amazing special guests that we have. And uh, Michelle having been uh, definitely one of those. I look forward to seeing you again next week for the Q&A. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well. <laughs>